Welcome to Mathematica for Biologists, Chapter 1, Part 1. So if you're looking at this tutorial, you probably want to do things like analyze experimental data. So op open it up, import it, export it, uh, make a graph, export the graphs, things like that. You'll learn how to do all this in the tutorial. I'm assuming no basic knowledge of Mathematica. So if you complete uh, both chapters of this tutorial, I think you'll have a pretty solid working knowledge afterwards of Mathematica, even if you don't need to do the specific tasks that I'm going over. They're just examples. So you can go to my website. Um, the URL is listed in the description of this video and download the sample data associated with this tutorial. And in there is a Microsoft Excel file. You don't necessarily need Microsoft Excel to do this tutorial, but um, just to show you how the data are organized. They're organized in, t in, in columns. So there's uh, time is, is row going down, and um, different, different trials are recorded in each column. So here we have three replicate trials from one animal, and three replicate trials from a second animal, and then three replicate trials from a third animal. And of course the replicates aren't going to be the same, there's going to be some variability. So we can do some statistics and see if the individuals are different from one another, um, given the variability between one, two, three replicates. And then each sheet represents one species, so we have four different species. And the data is a time-varying data in swimming speed of frogs. That just happens to be the data that I've selected for this. And so what, I'll, what we'll do is we'll make really pretty graphs looking like this. For example, for the different species, so you can see the mean is the solid line and the standard deviation plus or minus standard deviation at any time point is the shaded area. So I'll show you how to make it pretty plots like this. And then in, in the next chapter we'll do some statistics on this, some ANOVA. So the sample data you can get from my website in the description of this YouTube video. The first thing we need to do is set the directory using the set directory command. All commands or functions are have these square brackets, and the argument for the function happens to be a string, which is the path. So I'm going to copy in my path for the de desktop, and I'm just using this. I'll say yes so that it adds double slashes, and I'll put the semicolon to suppress the output, and I'll do shift enter, and shift enter always executes the cells. Okay, so that sets the directory. So now I'm going to do another command, import, and I'll do our actual data. So the first argument of the import command is the string file of the file name that we want to import. So um, it's time underscore speed dot txt. And then the second argument of the command is another string, which is a ta called table. So table is just um, tells the Mathematica how to parse the data, and the table tells it to parse it as a tab delimited text file. So if we import that, it just shows us all, all, all our data. You can see a couple of curly brackets here. A curly bracket, one pair of curly bracket, it encloses a list of data, or a one-dimensional array, or a vector, depending on how you think. And a set of curly brackets means lists within lists. This is not totally useful to look at the data this way, so I'm just going to suppress the output with this semicolon here, and then call it data. Just store the data in a variable, and then shift enter to run it. And now if we want to plot those data, well, first of all, let's look at the structure of the data. Dimensions. So the dimensions commands tell us the dimensionality of the data, and it's a list with two elements, meaning it's two-dimensional data. So uh, if you read the README file, it should be nine columns by 100 rows each. But this is 100 columns, each nine rows long, so it's backwards. So what we need is a transpose operation, so I'll put that up here. So this is a function within a function transpose brackets around the import command. We'll run this again, shift enter, so we see nine columns, 100 rows each, so that's perfect. 
So now what I want to do is plot out the data. So I'm going to use this command called list plot. And it's just going to plot all nine columns of the data at the same time, which will be a total mess. And that's not really what we want. So I'm going to delete that. And instead I just want to look at the first column of the data. So I'll just say col1 equals data double square brackets. The double square brackets means indexing the data. So we want column 1. If we wanted column 2, that would be a 2. And then we can plot it. List plot col1. And we should see a col1. It looks a little bit messy. Um, so I'm going to connect the dots. So use a separate command called list line plot, which just connects the dots. So that plot looks nice. So what I'm going to do now is just manipulate the data a little bit. I'll call this new data equals call one plus one. So I'm just adding numerical one to the data, and I'll plot that new data. And then it plots that down there. And we can plot two sets of data in the same plot if we want by adding a set of curly brackets within the list line command, implying that we're going to have a list of data in there. So new data, and then call one. And then it plots them all together. And I'm going to call that g1 and that'll become apparent later. I'm going to run that again, shift enter. So now let's ex export the data. So I'll export this as something. The export command is very simple to use. It just assumes whatever uh, whatever directory you set up earlier and uh, you can explicitly define the, uh, the path again if, if you want to save it to a different location in the first argument, but we're not going to do that. We'll just call this um, new data. And then, so that is the first argument, which is the file name, and then the second argument is the actual object to be exported, which is our new data array of numbers. Now, importantly, in the extension, is it tells the extension tells Mathematica how to package the file. So we want extension.dat. This could be also CSV if you wanted, but I want a .dat because I want a tab separated, a tab delimited text file. So that's Mathematica's way of knowing that it's the tab delimited text file. So we can export this. Uh, it saves that. And so what I'd usually do is just go into this on my desktop and then change this to a .txt so I can open it up in Excel or whatever I want. So now let's export this actual plot. And remember I called the plot G1. So the really nice thing about this in Mathematica, you can export graphics really easy. So let's call it graph1 as a first argument. The second argument is the object to be exported. So now the extension just defines what we want, what kind of format we want. We can do JPEG for example, save a JPEG of the graph, here it is, or this can be .pdf, you can make a PDF file of that, or uh, you can be, you can do .svg, which is useful for if you want to edit the, the, um, edit the graphics later on in something like CorelDRAW or Illustrator. So that is the first part of this tutorial, and in the next part of chapter one, we're going to look at some more complicated aspects of plotting the data and make the, learn how to make the graphs look more pretty.